All right, everybody. We're back downtown studio. Dixie Dogger's podcast coming to you once again. Yes, indeed. We uh, there's always a big debate in the hog dog world: open versus silent, rough dogs versus bay dogs, run and catch dogs are a whole nother deal. I have had the privilege to talk to people all over the, the U.S. about different run and catch dogs, and their classification is very different from what I think. But I have, it's it's like glory shined upon me, and <laughs> I've been introduced to a man who uh, he knows what a run catch dog is, and he's uh, he's got a name out there in the world, and a lot of people know him. The man is he, he's a legend in his time already, and he's gonna he's gonna give us some information on on how this stuff is, and and the, and the lowdown on it about form over function. This is uh we got Mr. Dean Ross with us today. Mr. Dean, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> I uh, uh, don't necessarily agree with the intro there. He kind of <laughs> oversold it, I believe. But well hey, we gotta get what we can get. We gotta grab gotta their get attention. people to listen. Yeah, we get we get them to listen and they, as long as we got them for a few minutes, we're all right. Oh my goodness. Mm. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, that's that's normally how we start it all off. But uh, you you tell us tell us who you are and about yourself a little bit and and what you do and 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 how you do it. All righty, I, I don't know. I I grew up kind of on a a big twenty thousand acre ranch and, uh, with, so I was kind of used to. Cattle dog or cow dogs, and, and uh, my granddad he had uh, he had English pointers, and bird dogs. We used to hunt quail and stuff, and then have a dog here and there uh, growing up. But but um, uh, never never I didn't know anything about dogs. You know, we just there's a difference between having them and and uh, being a dog man or or houndsman or you know. And uh, I didn't I didn't know anything about them really, other than you know how to house them and how to feed them. And, uh, um, kind of grew fast forward and uh, until about 10 years ago, I, I kind of got into, um, the hog dogging. Um, I, I got into the bay dogs and the lead in catch dogs, uh, just with some, uh, some relatives and some, uh, friends around where I, where I live and stuff. And, uh, kind of, that's kind of how I got into the, um, hog hunting or well or catching them with dogs but i've always been a real good uh well I say hunter with a rifle and then a bow and a fisherman and just um i'd say uh a little a little better than the average mm -hmm. um but that that kind of led me to the dogs that i have now i figured it um with the uh kind of how i got started in the run and catch dogs was uh through the course of bay dogging, I um, kind of had a, I just kind of started seeing things differently, how it could be done more efficiently or effectively instead of uh, running these pigs all the daggum time <laughs> um, uh, and, and then going off on the neighbor's neighbor and stuff, yeah. uh, um, you know, uh, I, you know, and I as a, uh, at the, at the, at, I was doing that with, my buddies and stuff around here. And at the same time I was, uh, I'd have a bow in my hand and I'd be walking these brushy creeks and stuff and catching them, you know, hunting them in their beds and stuff and, and shooting them with my bows. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I, I love that. And then I got to where I was doing it on the crop fields at night. I had a, me a, a pretty good little old setup where I was doing that on the crop fields uh, with some, uh, with some night vision and, and, uh, um, I just, I, I, I could get, I could go up to a pig or a group of pigs with, uh, on a dark night and, uh, with a little bit of cover in the field, like some sun, sunflowers and stuff. And if there was a big group of them, it was a dark night and you played the wind right, then, uh, you could go up there and kick them right in the nose. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, and so I was like, well, heck, if I just had a, a fast catch dog, 
I could I could be making money off this deal. Why why shoot them? Mm-hmm. Why not just catch them? Yep. And uh, and so it kind of that's where the wheels kind of got to turning was um, was that instead of instead of turning a bunch of bay dogs to a pig that you're that you know is there or um or you know like our bay dogs they they were just average nothing nothing that you could just sit down in a you know in the middle of the pasture and just sit there and drink your coffee or sip on beer or what have you and and then uh, wait till you know, uh, 30, 45 minutes or so. And, you know, yeah. he's found a pig for you, you know, you was the one kind of guiding the dogs and stuff. So, yes, sir. um, just kind of like my old granddad's bird dogs, they kind of stayed out there about between in the 10 and two position. And, you know, you just kind of went around to where you kind of figured the covey of quail was going to be. That's kind of what I used to do. Or that's kind of what I started doing with my, well, that's what we did with the, the curs. And then, um, uh, and then I kind of started doing that with these running catch dogs that I that I started um, breeding. Mm-hmm. Now, where did but, you grow up at, and where do you live now? Uh, I still live around the same area I grew up in. Uh, I grew up in North Central Texas, around uh, Jack, around Jacksboro, Graham, Wichita Falls area. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, we got you. I was trying to figure out what kind of terrain is what I was trying to picture in my mind. You know where how you were running. Stuff like that. So what did you start out with? On people, the, oh, go ahead. People think I run real flat country, real wide open country. No. <laughs> it ain't so. No, we, we delivered but, quail for several years, and we went all over Texas. And it is a very, very diverse type of terrain. And it can change from from <laughs> from one mile to the next. Yeah, uh, and, and the weather is just as bad. Yeah. So, but it's, it's some, it's, it, it is beautiful country about anywhere that I've been there, but some of us are not so forgiving. The country I hunt is, um, it's a lot of, um, uh, pasture land, ranch land and stuff. It's just overgrown with mesquite and cactus and tall grass and, and, uh, and then you, you're, uh, lots of creeks, some rivers and stuff, but green briars and plum thickets and, and uh, a pig ain't got to go very far before he gets into some nasty crap that you're crawling through and stuff, or that you just think not have to go through. And um, uh, but out where the, 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 uh, I I started hunting right here around the house where I grew up and all the land that I uh, uh, I, uh, I grew up on and stuff. And um, it was uh, I used to think that it was easier to catch here. Than it was out about forty five miles west of here, where I where I hunt now, and I'd much rather hunt right here than I than I did there. Well, I started going out there all the time because all this just uh, it got sold off and stuff, and so I started hunting out there. And um, I, uh, I don't know, it's, it's there's more there's more farmland out there. There's there's a lot more farmland out there, but it's it's kind of just as rough. Um, but the dogs make it, uh, the type of dogs I run and how I kind of hunt them make it appear like, um, the country is more open than what it is because they're running them down and they're catching on their terms. They're not, they're not allowing that pig to get to the brush that ain't, that ain't very far away. Actually, I hunt right on the Brazos River bottom. We'll be back after a quick break. We would like to interrupt this episode to take a moment to thank our sponsors and friends of Dixie Doggers Podcast, Southern Cross Cut Gear, Boars and Broads, Hardcore Hog Dogs and Cut Gear, Showtime Premium Pet Food, Animal Housing Solutions, Tusker's Magazine, American Doghorn Association, 4L Kennels, Hogbang.com, The Boar's Nest, Crockett Taxidermy, Mud Creek Hogbang. A big shout out to all those people and companies who help make us who we are. Thank y'all. Okay, I got you. What uh, what kind of what breed of dogs did you you choose to start out with on your running dog projects? I uh, I originally had 
I had started, uh, I did a lot of research and stuff on it. And uh, the best, the best place that I could get any kind of um, information was from Australia. And um, they were big into the Danes and the stags and, and, uh, and the bull terriers and stuff. And, and, uh, and, and, uh, and so that's, that's kind of what I started doing. I'm, I'm, I, I bought a, I put a, a, a deposit on a Dane puppy and, uh, I got a, I bought me a stag and, um, and a pit. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and that's, that's, that I was going to start crossing stuff. And, and, uh, of course I had my pit when I had my, my bay dogs and that was a, she was a pretty awesome pit. But, um, um, but that's, that's kind of what I was going to do there. The Dane fell through. Um, it, uh, that litter wound up, <laughs> it died. Okay. And, uh, so I didn't get the Dane and, uh, I, uh, I wound up meeting, uh, meeting an old boy there for a while. Uh, he and I were, were decent friends and he had some dogs similar to what I run now. They had a lot of wolfhound in them and, and, uh, wolfhound and mastiff and, and, uh, I guess just mostly wolfhound and mastiff. Okay. But um, I uh, I didn't. I, I tried a lot of them dogs, but I only really had one of them that was worth a flip. Yes, sir. And um, but uh, I uh, I did breed my the first breeding I ever did was my stag, which was he was sure enough. Um, a uh, I, I call him a once in a lifetime stag, but now that I've got access to um, some of the best stags in the country, he he wasn't a once in a lifetime stag now for me. But at that point, he was. I mean, I I didn't I didn't think there was one any any better. Yes, and uh, he'd go off and catch his own big boar. Yeah. You know, uh, that was he was that was a phenomenal hard stag. So I bred him to like a mostly wolfhound female, and um, and and there. Uh, I uh I kind of had a a little bit different style of dog. Um, you you once I once I put wolfhound in them, I never I never seen a dog get thrown off a pig again. Yes, sir. Where you could you could you could you could knock a stag off or throw a stag off, you know, of a like a two hundred fifty pound boar. You know that boar kind of throw his head around and stuff or swing him around and he's kind of coming off. But he'll get right back on, you know. The boar yeah. can't go nowhere. But the wolfhound. When not. I put that, when I put that, when I crossed with that wolfhound, uh, there was enough jaw power and power in them dogs that uh, that never happened. I've, I've never seen it happen again. I, I, once, once they got a hold of a pig, you know. Yeah, once they get, once they get on. I've I've had a couple of stags over the years. I had some bull lurcher type dogs, and I wound up getting me uh, a three quarter wolfhound quarter stag a few months ago it's a young dog and i'm going to incorporate it into the the program that we're doing we're doing some you know a, a similar kind of a deal that that works for us you know uh yeah but I, i've I, i'm glad that you said that about the wolfhound because i've all i've never had one and i've always wondered what's the difference i've always heard there was a big difference and with you saying that that just boy that made my little heart flutter there i was like yeah Finally, maybe I, maybe made a good decision. <laughs> I don't know. I, that's um, that's hard to say. I, I've got. I've actually just talked about things falling in your lap. I um, I was gifted five wolfhounds, five AKC registered Irish wolfhounds. I bought one, so I've got six. As soon as I bought one, I got gifted five. To do a project with oh boy that I bought one from he asked me he said uh, he kind of got interested in in pig dog and when he come to deliver that wolf pound he actually gifted my daughter one and I fell in love with the one he gifted my daughter mm -hmm. um, she is she's nice um, but uh, those are too those are still a bit too young to be hunting and stuff you hell you know, wolf pound's got to get up there at around eighteen months old or older yeah. and um, I'll show them some trainers, you know, now and then, but, but, uh, the female was dang sure. She's dang sure a good one. And, um, but the, the old boy asked me, he said, um, he said, what would you, what would you really look for in a wolfhound? If you, if you could, if you could tell me the perfect, the ideal wolfhound, what would it be? And I described it to him and, uh, he said, uh, I'm looking at, 
I actually have a female. What you just described, I have right here. So we're not, she's kind of a, a dog we took back and uh, we're not all that close with her like we are our other pets. And he said, um, you know, uh, uh, when you when you were describing that, he said, um, well, I think that's her. You Would you like to try her? I said, I sure would. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, uh, she had a litter of puppies at the time. And uh, he said, well, when she gets some things winged, I'll bring her to you, and I'll bring you a couple males off of her, too. So he did that, and he actually brought me three males, and I really high on her and two of her, two of her male puppies. And, and uh, so I'm going to try to make a go of them things. But yeah. I actually uh, um, I actually got a, a pretty neat video of her running some uh, – she's the only a wolfhound I've got that's old enough to be catching pigs at the moment. Okay. but uh. I actually got a, had a pretty neat video of her in the daylight uh, running her own pig down and catching it on a on a wheat field, and uh, there was, and uh, so I've got I don't know of another another uh, another such video that exists of of a of a, a registered Irish wolfhound doing any kind of a work like that. No. Yeah. I got that video and I was pretty excited about that. But. Yeah. There's a there's a guy in South Georgia. He's got a uh he's got a crossed up dog. And I think it's stag, bull terrier, and a little bit of dogo or something. And he uses that dog similar like you, what what you just said, but it's more all just sight hunting, like crop fields and stuff. Yeah. And that's what really piqued my interest on it. Cause like you said, the uh I mean, not stacking out wolfhound, and that's what really piqued my interest when the size of the the boars that that dog could hold by itself and not get thrown. It was just it blew my mind. Like you said, it yeah. was it was like watching a lot of the the Aussies and the way that they're they're big luggers. That you know the dogs that they use, they they have one dog shows that you know they drop them and they go out there and they hang on these giant boars. And that, that hog is just steadily throwing his head, but he, he doesn't shake the dog. That's that that's got to take a lot of jaw power. Do you know what kind of uh, pressure that a wolfhound has on his jaws by any chance? No, I wasn't I, I thinking. Just, uh, they they can sure squeeze the the daylights out of a small pig. Or put it that way, <laughs> ain't no saving on them. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> and you know, and a lot of them the bigger dogs like that, uh, uh, a wolfhound or a dane. Uh, they'll just reach over the top of an old pig mm-hmm. uh, and just hold them by the back of the neck, not even hold them by the ear. Yeah, and you know that works too. Whatever, I, they you they they pretty pretty good at it. Yeah, that's um, what I'm saying. That, but, it's a good hold but anyway. There is a there is a a, a a big difference between controlling what you're what you're a hold of and just just being attached to what you're a hold of mm-hmm. and most most people have that run like dogos and pits and all, all, all these lead-in style catch dogs and stuff um they've never really seen what control is on a big on a big board you know uh, in my my opinion on the we can get into form for what what really form for function is yeah. on a for a pig dog in a minute but in my my opinion, you need to be about twenty eight inches tall or taller to hold uh to, to be able to control a big boar. You know, if if you don't, then your center of gravity isn't where it ought to be. It's not over your front legs. It ain't in your front legs. It's behind the front legs. Mm-hmm. And you you take that center of gravity and you put it behind them front legs, then uh, you just your front legs are just kind of used as balance. Then and uh, you know you can use them a little bit depending on how big the pig is, but, um, but unless you're, uh, unless your center of gravity is oh in your front legs, in them front shoulders, you ain't pulling nothing. You know, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't controlling it. It's controlling you. Yeah. I mean, that's, it holds true in weightlifting or, or boxing or MMA or anything center of gravity. Yeah. And I, I, I don't I, think many people would, would even consider that about dogs. No, and it's not a it's not a weight deal. It's a it's a height deal. Height, yes, it, it's it's is because 
like say on these on these bigger boars that that are up there around 270, getting up there around 300 pounds or so. Them some, you know, they've got to have it all. They've got to have height, length of body, and and width. You know, they just they're they're big old thick things, and and um, you know, if they ain't got that height too, uh, um, then they ain't gonna make that much weight. But uh, but anyway, when a if a dog say like a size of a, a pit, uh. If they're if they got a hold of that ear, and um, and my you know, and when I describe this, I'm 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 envisioning one dog and one pig out there, and you know whether it's in the trees or the the wide open or wherever, it's 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 not a it's not a bunch of dogs on a pig, it's it's just one on one. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, so when when this when this shorter dog, like a pit or something, or a, a 23 inch top dog or something, is holding one of these bigger boars, he's got his head is up, you know, he's kind of holding, um, he's kind of having to reach up there. Well, that boar, he just, if he's a slinging his head all the time, if, if he's, if that boar is fighting, um, then that, that front end of that dog is the weight of it and stuff is oftentimes shifted to the back. And, um, you know, and, and so his center of gravity isn't over his front feet anymore. So he's trying to do most of the work with his back legs. Yes. And, uh, and you're taking, you're taking about, you know, you're, you're only working with about 30, 35% or, or, or so of that dog's power, um, and to try to pull that boar around, you know, if he's just trying to use most of his, the power in his back end. But if he can, if he's tall enough, on them big pigs where he can plant them feet, them front feet right out, out in front of him and shove backwards. Just, it, it just use his front end and all that power in his front end to, to pull that boar, to pull that boar's head around. He can, he can then pull that boar around. Yes, sir. He can control the movement of the boar. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's very easily demonstrated by like the wolfhound. You know they can they can control a big pig so daggum easy, and um, but where you know if you're if you're if you're borderline about what you can control, then it gets harder to see. I tended my philosophy when breeding these top dogs was I wanted a pig, um, or a dog, excuse me, a dog that could could uh, could uh, control. Uh, you know his max was probably like a four hundred pound pig. That way, yeah. that way, when he did get on these two hundred and seventy pound boars and stuff, wow. he wasn't he wasn't winded so you know, so quick, or, or he wasn't working. He wasn't immediately maxed out in what he could control. You know, if you're not maxed out in what you could and control, you can control it for a lot longer. Yes, sir. And then a, a finder holder type dog who is out there, he's holding for longer periods of time. Then you know, his, his stamina. And heat tolerance and stuff, it becomes an issue. And the quicker he runs through that stamina when holding a big old boar, you know, the the more likelihood you're you're going to heat stroke that dog, or or um, he's going to get drug off, the more, you know, or or the, the, the more problems that it, it just it, you have that yes, result sir. out of it. And uh, so, and also too, when you're when you're caught on something that is way beyond your max, let's say um, if if you're kind of maxed out on a uh, 180 pound pig or a 200 pound pig, and now you've got a 280 pound uh, boar out there that you're holding, and you're caught 600 yards away, and and uh, um, or the dog is, and and uh, you're on foot, you know he's he's uh, he's being controlled. If you're not if you're not in control of what you're holding, then you're being controlled, and if you're being controlled. Then you're taking more punishment. You're getting raked off. You're getting drug around anywhere that the board wants to take you. You know, yes, and it's uh, I've got video after video of these boars trying to rake these dogs off on trees, and and uh, um, they'll just it, it's so common that it doesn't. It's not there's not really a savvy boar that does that. It's just something that pigs naturally do. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll just try to rake you off on a tree and they'll go round and around that tree. <laughs> yes, and then, uh, and if they're close to a fence, they'll try to rake you off on that fence or they'll take you to water or they'll take you to the brush or anything that they can do, you know? And, uh, um, but if, if you, um, 
uh, if your dog is out there, you know, if you're not right there at your dog, then the, the likelihood of him getting raked off is, is uh, especially when you're in the woods and or, or the brush, um, is pretty high. I've, you know, I've been uh, the longer water ha- having that yeah. light is very good. I, I mean, we, we don't have because they could always touch with a lot of times. Yeah, we, we haven't had any to. dogs that were quite as, like I said, I've had a couple of stags over the years. Uh, but we had a dog where we did, we did some breedings. We had some Airedale crosses and, and they were crossed with several things, but we had a dog named King that was the, the biggest one that we had. And that's what he was for. And he, he could, like you said, he would, he was taller, longer legs. King was probably what? 23. To show 23 to 24, somewhere in there. Yeah. But like you said, we literally turned them loose one time and they, they were 700 and something yards before they got there. That's where the hog was at. And another dog, another guy turned his dog loose with it. And I told him, I said, don't do that. Don't do that. And this was a, one of the American Sentinel canines. And that dog was heat stroke and, and died when we got there. Yeah. Now that's and, more, I think that's a hundred percent. That, was, that ego. was the, that was the owner's ego. Yeah. It, he should have never done that. But at the same time, the form for function yes. deal comes into place because we had done that with that dog. Everything that you just said was exactly what we were breeding for. Yes. The heat tolerance, a dog that, that is a catch dog and not just catches. Yeah. And I'd say, I think the only difference that from what I've seen in our program versus Dean's would be, whereas instead of breeding for one specific dog like him, we're just mm-hmm. like, we just need the dog to perform because we typically just have more than one dog. Yeah. It's hardly yeah. ever is there going to be one dog on just one. Period. Oh, yeah. That, and and that that's what's really impressive. That's why I said I was yes. thinking about that in the water because we deal with a lot of water. Because when the goal is just one dog on the pig, it takes control. Well, it's even if you got well, 20 dogs, if you got I'm, one that's tall, the, yeah. the tall I'm, dog is better in the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I prefer to hunt two dogs at a time. But if there's multiple pigs out there, what I want is each dog going out there and grabbing its own pig. Yeah. I didn't I didn't get into the one out top stuff very hard and stuff till my buddy Will Booth started running some of my dogs and uh he started doing that and that's that's him and Ray Strong's game. And uh um and they would I huh? Is that dog's name John? Will, no, Will, Will Booth's dog. No, his um, that's me. Um, I know, I know, uh, I, I know. Will, I was trying to yeah. think of that dog's name. Anyway, Will had a dog of mine that by the name of uh, Magnus. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was he was a wolfhound uh, stag cross type dog, and he was doing that with him a little bit. And then, that's uh, the dog I was talking about earlier that piqued my interest. One of those, one, it's it's Will's dog. I don't know if it was one from you or not, but it's one of Will's dogs. Jack is Jack. Uh, the dog he's got now. Jack, that's the dog yeah. I was talking about. So, yeah, that dog uh, is phenomenal. <laughs> I I went out, I went over and got Jack for a little while and bred some stuff to him and and I hunted him while over the summer while Will wasn't and. Yeah, and, he told uh, me he said, "Yeah, buddy, he, mine come and got him, hunt him a little bit." He didn't say it was Dean Ross. <laughs> yeah, uh, old old yeah. man, old Will got to have a conversation. <laughs> uh, he's getting, you know that. Go ahead. That dog, that dog, really not a form for function dog. He's just barely he those those bull, <laughs> those bull terrier crosses yeah. right there are are just barely fast enough to get it done. But it, one out, there's something about them pigs that. It, it seems like they won't run as hard on them, but they're more out to set and fight them. And 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 uh, something pretty amazing that I've seen about that dog was he can come up with that ear. He'll hit them old pigs, them old boars. will sit there and wait on him, and he'll hit them, or them boars will they'll hit my dog, you know. And but majority of the time, that dog tries or that that boar tries to hit that dog coming in, and he'll flick that dog and he'll take off. Now that dog's got to run him down. Mm-hmm. That daggum jack dog come up with that ear more than I, I just I was amazed time and time again. I was like, God wow. bless. So, so with the bull terrier, awesome. the the bull terrier cross that that's what because we we raise bull terriers as well. And uh, where do you get them? They come from all Here over the, the place. What? No, sir. Okay. No, no, sir. 
<laughs> no, yeah, sir. It, they, you can't find, I, no, sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, that we, me and you'll have a conversation about that when we talk off of here. Uh, but anyway, that's what me and Will were talking about. I was going to send him a little jip, and uh, we wound up having a small litter on that one. And so this next breeding, I'm going to send him something. But I was interested in that bull terrier stuff because our stuff is so thick over here. Uh, and like you said, yeah. he, he, me and Will t- literally talked about the same thing. He said they're not as fast as some of the other ones. And so I'm, I'm assuming he's talking about your dog, uh, about the speed and stuff. But for, for the area that we hunt, we have a lot of hills and, you know, a lot of different elevation changes, a lot of thick cover. It's the big hogs. They don't, it don't seem like they run wide open. It's like they stay at a steady pace. And I feel like a lot of them, especially after they get dogged once or twice, they're like really, just really, because a lot of the pigs here, they get spread by people. Yeah. And so it's like most of the time that biggest boar, he's probably that first sounder that got turned loose when he was only a few months old. And he knows what people are and he knows what dogs are. Mm-hmm. And he'll go over here and sit in this thick stuff. Listen, you drive by and he's going to slip out the back. And they do that where they're running you <laughs> oh, in yeah. circles. They know where they're at and where they live and how to evade you. Yep. They and, get and smart. Yeah. That, that, that dog we were talking about, King, that cross that we had, he'd done so well here. If he'd have been about three inches taller, Four, like you said, twenty eight inches. I, I don't. I do that thing right. There, that's exactly what I, I, I think he needed. Uh, just a little more height. Because he had yeah. everything. Else. He had everything. <laughs> he could. It's a hundred degrees. He could stay caught for how, however long. No matter. Go to him. You know, because he wasn't fighting with the hog. He would just tuck in beside him. He'd put them front feet, stretch them out, sink them back feet down, and he would just lay against him. Yeah, and so, um, he just needed to be a little bigger. He'd catch on the uh, behind the front leg a lot or a good bit if he ever got like with other dogs and stuff. Yeah, like if there was other, other dogs. dogs. He'd find somewhere to hold and still yeah. figure out how to work it. But we, you could yeah. wait with a dog like you got. All you need's one or two. Yeah, I. Uh, uh, any, uh, y'all mentioned the water. Um, mm. These uh, these bigger dogs, these taller dogs and stuff. You get a water catch, and if the like. If the pig can touch, they can touch. Mm-hmm. Um, if uh, that that pig, you know, like say uh, pits or a lot of the bay dogs and stuff, that pig will go out there and stand where he can touch, but yeah. the dogs have got to swim. We've seen he can, that. He can kind of work them old dogs over pretty good, yeah. you know. Shoot you. And uh, but a dog that is is tall enough to uh, to stand as well or better than what the boar can. Then it's uh it, you know it, it it's yeah. <laughs> it's still not the ideal scenario a water catch but it, there ain't no swimming you know if the if 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 the if the pigs are swimming then uh, the dogs probably swimming too because yeah. it's it's, and, um, it's rough but, going um, out there doing all that swimming especially when the pig yeah. like because here we have a lot of strip pit ponds so there's no like They're, step down it goes out. Deep. And every foot it drops six. Yep. So like two foot off the bank, it might be yeah, six or swimming. eight foot. And so you get out there, and if the worst ones is like a hundred and fifty pound pig, and there's four or five dogs out there, and they're trying to bay it or catch it, and you got to go out there and swim it and whoop your dogs off, and they're trying to bay and catch you, and especially if you're hunting with other people's dogs, it can be a real mess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They uh, here that you know, mentioned the 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 boar is not seeming to run too hard there to here, them suckers fly. Yes, sir. Uh, they, uh, you, um, they, uh, what I, how I hunt is, uh, I'll use some thermal or night vision and I'll, uh, I've got like a hundred fields or so, probably 50, 60,000 acres of pasture land and stuff, but my money's made off the fields. And, uh, yes. um, I'll, uh, I'll go, I'll drive by these, if they're, I can't always look in the fields because if the wheat's real tall or if it's hay grazer or something, then, you know, the, the, looking in the fields is pointless. You just got to catch your dogs out there or mm-hmm. drop them and road them and, and, uh, downwind on the, on the downwind side of the fields and stuff. But anyway, uh, um, so, but I get to see a lot what go, uh, goes on, uh, about half of the time of the year. And, um, you can, you can get up on a big old boar and, and, uh, them suckers can flat fly. I'm like, oh, yeah. some of them knock my socks off. I'm like, God bless. I, I seen one a couple of weeks ago in an area that we hunted. He's one of the first ones that I've seen that really, really cut loose. 
And uh, he was probably 175 pounds or so, best I could tell. And I'm telling uh-huh. you now, I don't know many, many dogs of any kind that would, you know, could have outrun him in that short distance. And it was so thick where we were at. You just see little, you know, just see him here and there. It was just, just like a streak of lightning. And yeah. like I said, in some areas, and I, and I know guys that they deal with the hogs running constantly and they run wide open. It's just that mm-hmm. the, the areas that we hunt. We don't have the tracks of timber. We, well, we're not just that. we don't, They don't have the pressure. We're, they're not pressure. Would, we're the only ones hunting it. I would venture to say the more open the area, probably the more the distance the pigs travel mm-hmm. um, and stuff to uh, to get, um, as I say, a feeding area to, from a, a bedding area and stuff, probably the, the faster they are. If you got a lot of... Um, crop land and the, the uh and then the, the the pasture land or the like say the, the the river bottoms and stuff that might be a mile away well then pigs might be coming a mile away and for mm-hmm. some reason they might cross two fields to get to a different one yeah, i don't i don't understand that uh, yeah but, uh, i've seen that just here. pigs nature because like i was reading a study that just got recently published by uh tyler evans or dr tyler evans now and they were talking about, like, trying to pattern these hogs and stuff on Knoxville Wildlife Refuge. And they was like, well, we see that they use these corridors, but then occasionally they just go and do something else with no apparent reason. Yeah. And they was like, I guess it's just, and they basically was like, the nature of the pig. You just, like, get a wild hair up their ass and just, I want to go yeah, do this pigs. now. They'll stay, on a, they'll stay on a bait <laughs> pile for five days and then disappear, and there'll still be bait there. And then the next time, they'll stay where the bait pile was, was at, for three days with no bait there. They just, they're, they're crazy. Yeah. I, uh, but, but here they, um, I guess I've caught, you know, all the, all the slow ones. I catch all the fast ones too, or dry through. But, um, but man, alive, they, they are fast. They, they, it sure, it sure takes a pretty fast dog to catch them. And, and, uh, so I, um, that's I where the form what, for function comes in right there. Yeah, yeah. I'll uh, I'll de- I'll describe form for function. I, yeah. I kind of um, you you look it up in the dictionary and it just describes it as a bunch of semantics. And um, and for most, I would say for a lot of dog breeds and stuff, uh, it really, especially nowadays, it really is semantics. Mm-hmm. But um, when you can uh, uh, apply it to like a a, a cat dog of sorts, uh, especially like a pig dog. Um, then, uh, I can, I think I can pretty well define it for a pig dog with it and leave the semantics out of it. Um, it is, uh, you, you really need about two or, or three, um, well, I, I say there's four, four basic principles of, of, uh, of form for function. And it is uh, for a pig dog and, uh, it is. Speed, hardness, size, and finding ability. Um, and to, you, you've got to have the speed in which to run them down. Uh, you can look up. You can look up the speed of a, a old feral hog, and uh, they claim that they're about thirty miles an hour. Well, shit, that's you know, I I don't know if I really believe that or not, but uh, that, you know, uh, but that's the number we'll go off of. Um, so if they're thirty miles an hour. Then you need something that's about thirty-five mile an hour or more. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got you need to be able to walk that pig down pretty daggum fast, and uh, and catch him like if you if you are nine times out of ten or more, you're you're finding them pigs um, in a different area than what uh, than what they than what they prefer to be caught in. Like say, if you're finding them with a bay dog, or if a dog gives a bark, the pig's going to take off. And he's gonna he's gonna run you know a mile or two miles or or uh, or seven or eight hundred yards to to some kind of a somewhere where he wants that it feels like he can better defend himself. And it's in a daggum river bottom. It's in the briars. It's in you know backed up in a in a daggum amongst the bluff or or something you know yep. or in a tank. And um and uh you know it's a, it's a it's a lot worse place to be caught. So you. If a, you want a dog to be able to run that pig down in short order within a hundred or two hundred yards, you know, and uh, and catch him, so he's got to have he needs to have that kind of that type of speed. And I don't mean like 
like in the, in the type of speed I want is if you're out here in a, in the wide open, a, a real good, let's say just a bare field, uh, just, just, just simplify it here. Just a wide open bare field. I don't want that dog. Uh, I want more speed on that. I want that dog to run up to the head of that pig and, and grab him by the ear, not the nutsack or the tail. Yes, um, because what, what, I what I'm, see around here a lot of times is uh that old dog that, that, that dog that grabs that that tail or that nut sack uh he just hold on to that pig and that pig will drag him yeah if, especially if there's a fence by that that uh that boar well he'll just keep going and he'll pop right through that fence and drag that dog off and uh, uh some of them majority of them will turn around and fight and uh but there is such a high percentage of them that don't i don't like a dog that'll do that if if he can if if the terrain will allow it now that the terrain's got to allow it if we're running through the trees or if we're running through uh uh you know uh stuff that's pretty tall that's about as tall as the the, the pig and the dog are and stuff then they're kind of going up there and grabbing on that that back end of that that pig to try to spin him and then get the ear because if there's stuff in the way, you know, he can't really okay. run up there and grab that ear. But if, if all is equal, I want that dog to go up there and grab that pig by the ear and then pull that pig around. Yes, sir. And, uh, but it takes, uh, it takes a real fast dog to do that. If you're struggling to catch that pig, that dog just wants to go up there and grab that back end of that pig to try to turn that pig because you don't really have that, that raw closing speed to get up there and hit that pig on that ear and then pull that pig around by the head. And uh, so that's the kind of speed I like. Um, the hardness the, uh, for a form for function dog, he's got to be a one out hard, big, uh, big boar hard dog. Um, if he, if he's got a weight on another dog to, to catch a pig, you know, let's say he goes out here in the woods and he, 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 uh, he finds one and he barks at it. Uh, nice. that pig's going to take off, you know, and now it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a different type of game, but if he'll run up there and he'll catch that pig immediately, um, without another dog having to be present or anything like that, well, then you're caught within, you know, general, generally five or 600 yards from you, yep. you know, and, uh, um, you can get, you know, if your dog is rolling out, if he don't, that's another thing too. I don't like long range dogs. Um, especially catch dogs, but you know, if they'll go out and hunt, you know, 100, 200 yards from you, and uh, um, and you're a pretty good hunter, you know, and you got a decent population of pigs, you can put some pigs on the truck, you know, yeah. And uh, and if your dog is sitting there rolling off, if you don't see him, uh, and you're kind of paying attention to your Garmin, uh, and he's rolling off 250, 300, 350, 400, I mean, I'm I'm headed that way because I, I know he's. Yeah, uh, wind and something that, that's right and and uh so it doesn't i don't I'm, I'm you know time is you know time is of the essence you know especially when you're <laughs> um finder holder hunting yeah and uh so uh i'll run out there and and um you're usually not caught but about four or five hundred yards away sometimes you're caught a lot more than that but uh um that's not how i really like to hunt um but uh oh and then rolling off my god son of a bitch um <laughs> oh, like, yeah i uh this daggum dogs will roll off you know I, I put a handle on my dogs yes sir. uh them suckers you you tell them to get off a pig touch them on the head and and then and, and then they get off and while you're tying the board down there they'll, they'll roll off and go. and go get another one yeah. and that's probably to be 800 900 yeah. I've had them go a, a mile or more and they get lugged up again. I mean, they'll, they'll put that and I'm like, geez, you know, you are hot and they're, and, and they're spent. And, you know, it, it, that's a, makes it I don't like to makes get it that hot. Day. But that ride yeah. home, as long as it all didn't go to shit, the makes, dog didn't cut, you were like, I know what I'm feeling. It makes, <laughs> it makes for good dogs. You know, I like, yeah. I like, the, I would prefer to have good dogs. Um, even though I don't like my dogs to do that, I still want dogs that will do it. I just want to, yeah. I want to have the, put the handle on them. I was like, say, sit down. Yeah. Like you you s- know, you'd but rather when, reel like them back say, than push them out. Yeah. Right. You, you've got it but under I'll, control. You got, you put them in the place where they're, they don't have to do that. 
they're they're mm-hmm. able to do it if need be. In the in the winter time, I don't mind it near as much. Yes, sir. But uh, in the summertime, I do not like it at all. Yeah, it's, and uh, that's, that's but a long ways. I'll show off a little bit when I got a guest out or something like that, and I got a good dog. I'll I'll let that dog roll out, and and uh, I say, you go out there, you know, I'll, I'll tie this pig. You here's a Garmin. <laughs> you go, you you start heading that way, and uh, <laughs> and you know, people people want to come. The word gets around like you you need to go see some of yeah. oh, uh, Dean's dogs, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it ain't like it ain't like the crop dogs and stuff that we got that or that we hunt. He's got a different style of dogs, and he hunts them a different way. And so I'll, you know, if that's what if that's what they come to see, I'll I'll, I'll want to tell it to them, you know. Yep. But we, uh, we, I only want to tell one. I, I we got to be related, D. You uh, can ask Nate how many times I would be like, uh, "Let's take him for a walk." <laughs> we, I want have, a good. Yeah, they're, hard they're like, hunt. "We want a good hard hunt." Like, okay, well. Oh. That, that's what you want. Oh. He's hung at 900 yards. You head to that one. And I'm going to go over here and stay with this one. <laughs> Bring it up. Bring it up. When, uh, when I get guests come down and our friends like like Will and Frank Straw, yeah. they come down and they, they know what they're doing. They're, whether it's uh, they hunting with my dogs or whether they bring their own. Yeah. I'm, uh, I just sit in the pickup and I drive to them. Yeah. I'm like, y'all go hunt. I'm, I'll drive. It makes it. I love it. You oh, know. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> and, that would be. That that'd but, be awesome right there. I'll come visit and and me and you will ride in the truck and we'll because like Nate, Nate's young, he's in good shape. We'll get Will and Ray Straw to come out there <laughs> and me and you can ride in the truck and them guys is, can wear them out. <laughs> they're so much better when you when you're walking out there. Like say whether it's it's uh you catch your dogs out there or whether you walk them out there with thermals and you're doing the whole the the the, the, the full crop dog type deal. What we think of crop dogging. Uh, you know, if you're walking out there 500 yards to, you know, a big old boar, and uh, and then now your your dogs run him another 150, 200 yards before he gets him caught. Uh, that was pretty neat just to have a pickup pull up there at the oh, catch, yeah. and you ain't got to walk all the way back, and you oh, can knock yeah. some pigs out like that. But but going back to that form for function deal, uh, so the the hardness has got to be there uh, to catch on the dog's terms, or you're catching on the pig's terms. Um, the speed has got to be there or you're still, or you're catching on the pig's terms. Um, and then the size, the size is what keeps you safe. Um, uh, you, you can, it's easy to get speed and it's easy to get hardness combined, but it's damn hard to get that size and speed and hardness all enrolled in one. Yes. Uh, but when you get that size, a 28 inch tall dog or, or taller, uh, then, um, they they can the control in which they can uh, hold a big boar with. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll put it to you this way: uh, if you see my social media and stuff, and and uh, you see all these pictures of big old boars, and uh, you know just one after another after another. Uh, all year long for years and years with multiple top, with multiple different dogs. You know how many dogs I've got killed? Mm. I've lost to a pig. I mean, not a one. Not really. That's awesome. Not a one. That, that that's and, awesome. Uh, that, that's that's saying a lot for rough dogs like that, or or running catch dogs. I, I was, I was, like I said, we we got lucky and we wound up having a good one. That king dog, he was nine years old, and everybody was like, "There's no way he was a running catch dog for that long." I'm like, "That well, yeah, he he wasn't a bay dog at all." If you if you do it correctly, if you yep. if you understand how to catch on the pig's ter- I mean on the dog's terms, if you can create a dog that can catch on his terms, deny the pig its terms, and you yourself are, are a good handler, you yourself are knowledgeable, then you you sure can. You can. I'm not going to say everybody can do that. I'm not going to say that I won't be able to to, to have this uh, this testimony. You know, in two years' time, where I've never lost a dog, I might, I might have one or two that have, uh, uh, that have taken a, you know, bad hit that I've not been able to save or something like that. And in, in in two years' time, but but for right now, in the ten years that I've been hunting pigs with dogs, I've never lost a dog. That's never got one killed, that's and that's what, 
that's one of the the big things that created a controversy between me and my my bay dog and buddies that I had at the time is they didn't understand what I was that I was um what I thought I understood. Mm-hmm. I under I under you know there's the common talking points and beliefs and stuff among that uh, those uh those that community of, of pig doggers yes. and um but I just understood it in a different way and I just believed in it as like if you I I just think that I can do it um with a, a different style dog. I, and you they could not satisfy me on their their uh um, their talking points and their and their beliefs and stuff. You just if I ask questions, they just they just tell me and they couldn't explain it. Yeah. Where I could give them an explanation as to why it would why I believed it would work. And I sit there and uh, I created that top dog and and I've been able to prove it. But I didn't always have this top dog to start off with. All I wanted was a dog that I could just point at a pig mm-hmm. and send him out there and get it. Mm-hmm. And over the over the years, the my what I have. Uh, I have just gotten my standards have changed. My 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 the idea of what what I wanted has changed and stuff. And yes, and uh, um, my dogs have just kind of have have developed into um, yeah you know, something that over the time wasn't isn't just as simple as a, just a straight up crop dog. You know that you just take out to lead out to a pig and just turn loose on it. You well, know that's what I was going to ask you. What is the difference? For the listeners out there, can you explain the the, the full difference in what a, a run and catch dog is and the crop dog is, or, well, or the style run and catch dogs like that you have and and that we've yeah, had I would, Saint I would very say there's, there's probably more different styles of run and catch dogs than yeah. there is than there is bay dogs, but uh, um, but what is uh, it to you? Of, what, what's yours? Yeah. Uh, any dog, a running catch dog to me is, 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 uh, and it's, and it's simplest of forms is a, is a catch dog that's fast enough to run a pig down in the open mm-hmm. with, a you know, effectively and efficiently. Um, that, that's kind of, and it's, it's this raw, it's the simplest of forms, but, you know, uh, um, uh, the difference between a crop dog and, um, and, um, uh, well, even my crop dogs, I, I want them to find, um, but say a thermal dog and, a um, and a finder holder is the is the fourth deal about a form for function dog is the finding ability. Okay. Um, it's uh, you know that I don't I don't want them to be a I don't think that if you want to keep dogs alive catch dogs alive you don't need them caught out there a mile from you all the time. Exactly. Um, you know they need to be caught up there pretty within a, a reasonable distance where you can you know kind of get to them. Uh, Five six hundred yards is a is a I don't I don't really like to push it no more than that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know I, you know I uh, but you got to breed for better dogs in order to get good dogs. Yes, you know if 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 you, what you breed for is is uh you know a four or five hundred a, a dog that can you know uh, win the pig for oh out there three four hundred yards then you're really not going to get dogs that are going to win them out there very far. If you're trying to breed, you know, uh, for a dog that can win them out there for, uh, you know, eight, 900,000 yards or so, yes. um, depending, you know, uh, th- th- that's got, that's dependent on your, um, you know, your, your, your circumstances, your terrain, the, the, and humidity or moisture and all this other stuff. But under, you know, let's say fair circumstances, if given the chance, if we can win that pig, you breed for dogs that win a pig out there around thousand yards or so. If that's what you're breeding for, then then most likely you can you can produce. You'll get to where you can get a dog out there around five six hundred yards. You know, um, you're, to me, I always you know my I try to breed for a lot better dog than what I have. I I fully understand that because I mean, if you have a a real high expectation. And your reality is a little lower than, you know, but if you're always trying to go for a higher expectation, you can hit your reality point a lot easier yeah. and more consistently. Um, yeah. A finer holder dog needs to have quite a bit of stamina. Mm-hmm. Um, 
uh, the stags are they they don't they have a ton of speed uh, a tremendous amount of speed and my gosh you're talking about a fun dog to hunt but the stamina isn't there um plus they're not really built for for holding for a long period of time either you know i'd say you can they can they can get thrown off a big board um even the best of them but uh uh it, they'll they'll run through their stamina pretty quick. They just and they'll heat stroke on you. Uh, so you kind of need to keep them in the crop fields. Uh, if you if you're doing trying to you know hunt the woods with a with a stag and he does run out there five six hundred yards, you know you better have some water on him. You better hope it's a water catch. Okay, <laughs> you know, gotcha. and uh, um, you know in the summertime especially, and uh, but and and then two. Their their recovery time is you you kind of that that dog needs to set out for about forty five minutes or so. You need to have that sucker a break. Whereas the uh, uh, the finder holders, you know, they're 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 designed to hold longer. They mm-hmm. they they they're they're out there. They're kind of actively working. They're on the ground, you know, and um, they're actively working a little bit. I don't expect them to work like an old bird dog or something or a hound dog or something just, just burning the pads off their feet. They're pretty pretty conserved, you know, but you're in some piggy areas and stuff. I expect them to go out there and hunt. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, uh, and then the, one of the you, winding is the main thing that I do. It's not so much tracking. I don't, I, you know, uh, uh, to me, the, the, uh, a finder holder just has a, a general nose. Just, just you know, nothing, nothing, no more than uh, just a an old pet or something like that. Dogs have tremendous, I mean, great noses. Yes, sir. It's just they're 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 um how they they're they're wanting to or they're willing us to go out and hunt and actively you know uh, find you know, prey or something is the, is the difference between, you know, a, a dog that you think has got a pretty good nose on it and a dog that you don't think has got a very good nose at all. They probably got about the same, same nose. It's just the, the mind mm-hmm. and how they want to use that nose. Yeah. But, um, even a stag, a stag or a greyhound, they got some pretty good nose on them, believe it or not. Uh, but, uh, some of them win really good. Um, but, uh, but they're they're known for their eyesight. They got tremendous eyesight. But anyway, going back to that uh, that finder holder, he's 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 built just a little bit different, a, lot, a little bit stouter dog, a um, little bit better jaw power. He's uh, um, got a lot more stamina. He needs a, he needs a lot more stamina, and he needs uh, he needs to have some hunt drive in him. There's a difference between hunt drive and prey drive. Oh, yeah. And uh, and a lot of people express. You get a lot of these uh, social media guys that are trying to sell you some <laughs> yeah. some dogs and and uh, uh, especially uh, some some bull terriers and stuff and they and they they express they try to describe the 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 dog's hardness as prey drive yeah that's, you know it shows shows tremendous prey drive that's and he's like he's gonna be a hard dog it's not it, it's totally different not even close. No, it's just that. Uh, but prey drive to me is is uh, you take a greyhound and you and he'll kind of walk. Well, I say I've, I've seen some of them pretty good, uh, yeah. <laughs> but but for the most part, a, a sight hound. He's gonna you picture a sight hound. He's kind of walking beside you and stuff, and then the rabbit jumps up and he gives chase after that rabbit. And if or a jackrabbit or something, that dog's liable to blow his lungs out staying after that rabbit. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, uh, and when and then when, but when the if the rabbit can make it to a, a brush pile or something and disappears, well, that dog loses interest in about thirty forty five seconds or yep. so, and he just comes right back to you. Mm-hmm. You know, just totally forgets about it. That's that's a prey drive. Yep. Is, is that and but hunt drive is the dog not even knowing a, uh, a rabbit is there. He's actively going out there and trying to find you know hunting for himself and stuff and. Yep. uh or so, uh, let's say if he does jump a rabbit and it does get away from him, goes into a brush pile or something, he, he can't quit it. Uh, he just, yeah. he just actually just, just, just will not going. leave it alone. You know, and that's just, even though he can't see it or anything like that, he feels like it's there to me. That's, that's still hunt drive being expressed there. And, uh, and then hardness is, um, uh, how I define hardness is a dog's, uh, willingness to go, uh, uh, one-on-one just hit a uh, uh, an old big boar head on 
Yes. You know, um, to me, that's hard. That's that's hard to express in its in its rawest uh, um, form as a pig dog. You know, if if you if if he'll just go up there and just um, old hog waiting on him, big old boar waiting on him, one on one on one, no other dogs around. Boar sees him coming, and uh, that old dog it just hits that hits that boar just head on. That's that's uh that's awesome right there. That's hardness right oh, there. Yeah. You know, and uh, and maybe you don't maybe you don't stick it, you know. He, but he he keeps trying. I mean, and uh, gets hit a time or two, and finally finally hooks up, and he's got to wade through that battle. And um, you know, to me, that's hardness. Mm-hmm. But um, well, speaking of, um, you had mentioned something earlier about some dogs just kind of um, how they hold and stuff. Um, uh, when a when a dog catches a a big boar. Um, there is a, a a a heck of a fight that goes on for about thirty seconds, and yes, um and after about thirty seconds or so, then that that it it really really settles. Um, if there's just one or two dogs holding that pig, and it, it, it it's pretty calm, and it's just the dogs walking around with a big old boar. Yes, you know, I like a dog if they it, while that fight's going on, I want them out front or about 90 to the right or left, you know? Um, and that's where your control is. And I'll explain, I'll explain that. Uh, but you gotta, you need to have a dog that is, uh, that can control. I mean, he needs to be, uh, have a center of gravity in front of his front, on his, over his front feet, you know? Yes, um, if we're going to be in, in those positions, um, and, uh, but after, after that fight is over with, and everything's just kind of holding real calm and stuff. I don't really mind the dog being shouldered up and just kind of walking with the boar. As long as we're not, I mean, as long as you don't let it get to a fence or get to the brush or stuff like that, you know, just conserve his energy and stuff. I don't mind that at all. The, the, but but not just to not just to hit that sucker and try to tuck up on yeah, the, the, yeah, the shoulder. That's, that, that's not right. right. And why that is, is if you've ever raised around horses, you put a, you can get you a, um, a bridle, I mean a bridle, but a halter and a lead rope. Put that on an old green horse, oh, yeah. and uh, <laughs> that's really not, you know, that ain't really lead broke. And, uh, you know, you're either out front or, to, or the side, yeah. to the side, and you're controlling his head. If that horse ever gets his butt turned to you, it's gonna be he bad. can drag your ass off. Yeah. You ain't no kind of control on that thing. Nah, I, but, I if you can, but if you can pull that head around, and where you can pull that head around is out to the side or out front. Then you've got you've got control of that horse. You can you can control his movement. Yep. Same thing with a dog. And then uh, so, but I know a lot of a lot of the uh, the pit guys and stuff, leading catch dog guys. They think it's it, it's they want their dog shouldered up with them pigs. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't have a problem with that because you know they're not if they're on a big old board they're not in control of it anyway. No, they're they're just so taking just, they're they're taking a ride is what they're doing. Yeah, yeah so just and, as well being a, you know that's probably the safest place. It's, for the, them. it's the safest it honestly that's that's why I was saying that earlier about the dog we had if he'd have been t- been bigger because like we had two of them. All right. So you had Hank and King and when we cut them dudes loose, they could control any any hole. Like you said, and yeah. then when it calmed down after the initial fight that's how you would find them. They would just be tucked up beside him. Yeah. And, and if the, yeah. if one of them was by their self, you would find them straight out to the right or to the left. They'd be squatted yeah. and, and, you know, not really squatted, hunkered down, but they would have their, their front feet down and pushing up because they needed to be taller That if it's a big boar hog. That, that was the issue we were having. And like I said – I don't think that we would have ever had any issues if they'd have been, uh, like I said, 28 inches tall or so. And that's why I'm, that's yeah. why I'm doing what I'm doing now is because I'm like, things like that work. So, uh, you, you know, I've tried to be open-minded, but I've done it with the smaller dogs and it worked as well as it could. Like I said, I, he was nine years old and had hundreds and hundreds under his belt. So imagine if he'd have been a little bigger. You know, um, yeah, and and like, um, and and had the same brains and the sensibility, and uh, and the 
and knowing how to to catch and hold. But like you said, most dogs go in there, they hit, they're getting slung all over the place. It's a great show. Don't get me wrong. You see a 30 pound pit go in there, grab a 300 pound boar hog, and that's something going to swing it like an earring all over the place. Well, that's all well and good, but chances are that hog's still going to be moving. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that makes that makes for some some pretty good pictures to yeah. to view. But you know, but how many but, times uh, have people been like, "Man, dog got slung off, or dog got cut to pieces"? I mean, how many how many times do you have to staple all your dogs up, Mister Dean? Do you, I have, had, you have to do it every it, hunt? It it depends on the dog. Okay. No, I do not. No, and I I love to put you know four or five big old toothy boars in the trailer and and uh, not have a scratch. Okay, um, well, a lot of these but, guys I'm talking about, they catch one boar hog, they got to get a whole nother catch dog. And I'm like, guys, you're doing yeah. it wrong. <laughs> yeah. That, that yeah. dog's a lunatic. It's either you, the dog, yeah. or both. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but it um, depends on the dog. Uh, the more, usually the more stag that you have in them yeah. or uh, wolfhound, the more sight hound type mentality that you have in them usually the fewer uh, injuries you have and why that is is because they those top dogs will when they grab a hold of a uh, a pig they're always they try to pull it around they're always in motion they're always mm-hmm. pulling the head of that pig around when that when that boar loads up uh and to try to hit them you know he'll he'll kind of cock that head to the side and try to hit them well he's already the dogs already pulled that yeah, you know he's, the, he's already uh, swinging that, that boar around He's already a different, yeah, he's in a different, the dog's already in a different place. And that's got to uh, wear the hog out. That's got to tire the hog down a lot more than just standing there or getting slung all over the place. If the hog is yeah. constantly trying to pull back and fight with it. Uh, I mean, anybody that's hog hunted for any length of time has watched, watched the guys from Australia and New Zealand and watched those big luggers and or whatever. Is that what they call them? The, the holders? Yeah, luggers, luggers or holders, yes. Yeah. Okay, well they you know, they've got that stock like a bull arab or something, you know, they got a big dog that's out there and when it grabs a hold of it, he's out to the front and he's constantly moving in you know, in some form or fashion. And so yeah. I can only imagine how much better it would be with the style of dog that you have, you know. Yeah. A lot of these of the the the, the bulldogs and the, the massive top dogs and stuff. They'll they'll still pull them around a little bit, but they're they're more out to just to just sit there and hold that pig and 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 right. take it, you know. And uh, they're and so uh, since for one, since they don't have the height or what have you to pull that that those big boars around, they they're they're being controlled, and um and, and that probably has a, a mental aspect in how they hold, but. Uh, uh, and but it's just a, the difference in uh, uh, the little difference in the holding style is uh, makes a big difference. Where a lot of these sight hound based dogs, that kind of their mentality is thrown to that sight hound. They're always a pull. They're they're, they're more out and be pulling it, especially in that fight. You know, they'll still be they'll, they'll get shouldered up. You know, mm-hmm. afterwards. But in that fight, they're they are pulling that boar around, and uh, um, that's that's the main reason why they take so fewer hits. But you got to be catching on the, the dogs' terms. If you're if you're hunting them dogs like a finder holder, you know in the in the greenbrier thickets and stuff, in the in the in the nasty bedding areas and yes. stuff, yes, then uh, you um, you're you have the same same problems as as, uh, as as everybody else. And and also too, your cut gear needs to change some. I was fixing to ask you on on the cut. I was literally that was my next question. What what do you recommend on that, or what do you run? How you know there, for for lead in catch dogs? There's no uh, they've got that covered. You know that oh, yeah. that's a pretty good. What you know you you vest that dog up. You know when you're catching on the pig's terms, you want that dog <laughs> vested up pretty good because you're relying pretty much solely on that that protection because that dog can't move. They, he they, he can't turn that that pig around. He can't control that, the movements of that pig because. He's in such tight quarters. He's just in briars and stuff. I mean, hell, you love to be kind of Carl in there. And so, um, mm-hmm. you know, anywhere, if a dog can't move like that, you know, uh, the pig charge him, these little big boars charge him and stuff and just get them wadded up where you're, you're, you're hoping that, you know, the hits that he's taking are in that, that, uh, are covered by that protection, you know? 
Yes, sir. But uh, when you're when you're running uh, a um, a running catch dog and you're catching on the the, the dog's terms, well then uh, to me you really don't need them covered no more than uh, than just I like the neck, the chest, and then the shoulders covered. Mm -hmm. uh, behind the shoulders, yeah, I, I, uh, usually that's you ain't gonna ever take a hit there. Okay. Once in a great while you will, but it's not enough to cover it, you know. Um, but uh, I have um, uh, I used to run Australian vests all the time, uh, and I like their vests a lot better than I did the American style uh, running catch dogs vests because the, typically the 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 American style vest always had that lower shoulder exposed. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I, I never understood why, uh, because it was like, they, they act like that dog can just throw that leg out to the side, like we can our arms, you know, they, their legs don't move that way. They go forwards and backwards, you know, yep. <laughs> and, and they're, and they got so much coverage over the top of their back, you know, or, or up there around their shoulder blades. And I'm like, this, you know, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't make no sense. I, I, and, uh, I never understood it myself, but, I, but and, uh, it's crazy. I, uh, and that's, that's where the, the harder running catch dogs that I've ever had, like tough and stuff. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of about the old tough dog. Uh, he's more famous than I, he's more famous than I am. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> he's what made me famous. There you go. But anyway, uh, he, you know, his old lower shoulder just turned to hamburger meat after about, uh, uh, about 18 months of work. You know, I, um, I couldn't take it. And so I, I, uh, I started running old Bloom Brothers vest on him and, uh, it, the, the the lower shoulder hits all but stopped. You know, I did get one once in a while, and I sure wish I'd had them a lot sooner. You yeah. know, they come down and they protect that lower shoulder there uh, so much more, and 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 really didn't care so much about protecting the high shoulder. And I I don't uh, I don't hardly ever get hits in that high shoulder, huh. but um, maybe because the dogs are so tall. Yeah. But um, but you know, a pig when he throws that. Uh, you watch them. If you'll slow a video down, um, they kick that that jaw, that bottom jaw, out to the side, uh, and then they'll they'll come in and up. They're just sweeping up uh, uh, at at the dog, just in and up, and uh, they'll get up underneath that vest. So I like for the protection to be about an inch and a half or two inches lower than where I than I, than what I really want protected. You know, yeah. um, because they'll get that old uh, that cutter up underneath there so often. But you know that, but they're they're coming from you know down and up. They're not or they're not coming. You know, falling. They're not they're not hitting that dog at a downward angle. They're hitting him up at an upward angle. Yes, sir. You know, and to me, the the protection ought to be down below. It ought to be kind of down there at the at the you know toward the bottom end of it. Yeah. And um, uh, I wound up uh, getting um, a sponsor over there in Australia, and uh, I, I love that man's plates and stuff. And uh, his he uh, he wound up getting so busy, and his health started failing him that me and him just kind of parted ways on good terms. I didn't want him making me any more free plates or anything, yes. and uh, he needed the income that he was getting for his medical reasons, and he had to turn down about half the work that he had or that he was getting in and um, because he couldn't handle it all. I was like, well, well, well Jared, I, you know, I, <laughs> I don't yeah. want you making me any more plates for free. There you go. And, uh, um, you know, and you don't, you don't need me out here trying to promote your plates and stuff, uh, because you're turning so much work down. So I thought, well, I'll take, I'll try to, uh, um, I'll try to influence the American market. And, uh, so I, I did a little, uh, talking to some, to some companies and I wound up going with, uh, Southern cross cut gear. They, we, um, I wanted them, uh, I asked them if they had sponsored me with uh, some plates, but not only sponsor me, but if they would design a plate the way I wanted it designed. So we wound up just using a design that I created off of everything I've ever learned about plates and things that I liked and things that I had to, to change and manipulate and stuff uh -huh. on these plates to get them to work for me. Um, I incorporated into this design and, 
and um, uh, Dave uh, up there at Southern Cross has been yeah. is fantastic working with me. And uh, is I've this run, a new I'm, one? Is this a something new that's coming out? Yeah, yeah, I hadn't. Okay, I didn't know they, if it was they, out they, yet or not. We we just did an interview with Dave last week. Yeah, the it's not on his website yet. Oh, uh, I already but, know. Yeah, I know which one. It, I know what it is. Yeah, uh, oh, you can yeah. see them. Uh, you can see them. They're 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 uh, on my on some of my dogs are black. Yeah. They're just the, they're, they're just the prototypes. But yeah, I, I finally approved them, and uh, okay. so he's uh, he's uh, and I've sent him some different measurements and stuff for different size dogs, and and so he's uh, they're putting them into. I think Nate, Nate's looking at him right now because yeah, that's what he he told us the other day. He had some that were were there, and he was going. I think he's going to send us a couple to to see how they run on some of our our rough stuff. Yeah, I just wanted them just uh, so just the basics. I don't want none of this fancy stuff yeah. on there or anything like that. Just give me the just the bare bare so basics. Got that low shoulder protection and, in it. Yeah, and Good then there. um uh. Also, too, like the hardware and stuff on there. Like my dogs would go uh, a full night of hunting. My dogs would go through about an average of eighteen fences here. We got fences out the wazoo in Georgia. Right here, we don't y'all don't have as many fences. Yeah, I know. And uh, but my dogs, I've, I've trained a lot of dogs and have a, hunt a lot of green dogs and stuff. And they they uh, even the experienced dogs. If that hardware and those buckles and everything get hung up on that fence while they're trying to go through that fence after a pig, well. Well, that pig will get, you know, a hundred yards on the other side of the fence from them, and before they can, uh, they've got to back up, try to try again and stuff. And and they're, they're depending on how that vest is made over the top of their neck and where the hardware is placed and stuff, and where the how the straps are, it determines on how well those dogs can get through that fence. And if those mm-hmm. dogs can zip right through that fence without really being hindered by that by that. Uh, by that plate or vest, then, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're a lot better off. Uh, plus two and training dogs, you know, uh, if they, uh, pups and stuff, if they, if, you know, that's, that's one of the things that they've got to learn is to, to get through those fences real quick. And, um, if they're, if they're all the time struggling to get through those fences because they're getting hung up after a while, they'll quit trying, you know, until maybe the next time that you go out and, uh, um, uh, it's just if if you don't have that struggle, and if you don't have that that deal to to deal with, uh, then you know that's that makes for a lot quicker catch and a lot better performance out of your dogs and stuff. So we moved. Uh, I, I had a I, that was one of the things I incorporated in the design of that that uh, those vests. But uh, but. That's uh, but also too. I want them cut. A, I, I want the, the 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 front leg to be able to extend fully on these, like especially like a a stag or a greyhound or something or a uh, something like that. Who is a just a a real heavy sprinter? Um, that they, they reach so far out in front with them front legs, or uh, you might be able to see it too, like your dog. Uh, can jump on and off your or jump up on your truck, no problem. But as soon as what you put a vest on him, he he can't he can't really jump up there. He yeah, wants you to exactly. do it. It's because his front legs really are are hitting that vest uh, when he's trying to raise raise them legs up and reach up there. Yes, sir. and um and uh so if you you wind up, I'm you know, I put different vests on my dogs. You know, and some of them you you put a a vest that that they can hunt in and move in properly, they just dip, they'll go jump over the side of your pickup. I mean, um, they, I don't even got to let the tailgate down. And, uh, but on a, if you, but on that same dog, if you put a vest on there, that's got some flaps out in front of it or, uh, or it's not cut up, uh, high enough. Uh, it doesn't have to be cut up too high. You know, you, the, the, you don't want to cut up too high because you'll get hit in the armpit now and then. But, um, but also your dog's got to be able to move, yes, you sir. know, if he needs to be able to run, you know, or what's the point of running catch dog, yeah, but, exactly. um, uh, <laughs> you can, you can put a different, you can put a different vest on a dog, that same dog. And, uh, he won't even jump up on a pickup with the tailgate. He might try, uh, 
But after a time or two of him doing it successfully, he, he's like, no, I don't want to. Mm-hmm. But it's because of that daggum, the, the, the shape of the vest. To me, the, the bottom of the vest is where you get your, how the, how the bottom of the vest is shaped is where you get your protection from. And how the top of the vest is shaped is where you get your fit from. How it conforms and stuff to the dog in his chest and his neck and everything. Yes. So, uh, I, um, I, I love talking to Dave. Well, man, I talked to Dave for about, I don't know, probably be two hours one day about vests and stuff. And he was like, I want to do this vest with you. Yeah. He's, so. he's a great guy. I mean, he is. Yeah. And he, he, he strives to be the best. You know, he listens. And I mean, if you've got a good idea and, and you're worth your salt at all, like he'll, he'll, yes. he's ready to do it, you know. And uh, yeah. we, we've we been running Southern Cross for, for a long time ourselves. And I don't know. It's to me, it's like, it's about, it's, I don't know. It's, it's the best that it's found for us uh, for, for, for the style that we use, you know. Yeah. And I, I know there's yeah. a lot, there's a lot of other cut gear manufacturers out there and, and they're all good. Some of them are better suited for other styles of catch dogs. And other styles of I, dogs than what I run, you know. I, yeah, I talked to more than just Dave, but uh, Mick, you know, I, I felt like any of them could make if they would just work with me. Yeah, they could make the same vest that Dave made. But when I talked to Dave, I was like, "This is the guy I want there you go. to work with." Yeah, and uh, you know, he's a good Christian man and everything. I, I felt like, and, and um, just easy to to work with. He believed in what I was what I was talking about and, and, um, he just, just talking with a man made me, uh, he won me over just by talking with him. And like, I want you. Yeah. You, so. Yeah. That, that, that's when you know it, that's when you know it's a good relationship right there. As soon as you're doing something like that and it's just like, I really want to work with this person. Yeah. You know matter that? of fact, I'm headed to, I'm headed to Georgia in about five weeks, uh, bringing some dogs up here. Really? I'm going to stay with, uh, Will and Rake Straw and another, Another buddy of mine that I've made recently up there by the name of Cliff. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, I guess right there around Tifton. And, uh, but I'm going to go up there to see, uh, um, Dave, meet Dave and stuff. And he's going to, you know, he's, he's, he's built me a few prototypes already. And they're like, man, I'll send you a bunch of them. And I'm like, you know, he, he just, it's such a good working relationship with him. I want to, I want to do those. The, I guess it's probably seven hour round trip from where I'll be staying, but go up there and meet him, kind of shake his hand and you know, just kind of meet him for a little while. Yeah. He's, he's, he's super good guy. We're, we're in Alabama. We're, uh, Are you? yeah, we're, we're just West of Birmingham, a little bit Northwest, but we have, we have hunting properties that are, they're further South and stuff like that. You'll be coming, you'll be coming through here to get over there. I imagine if you're, you're coming through yeah. from Texas, correct? So, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, I was gonna say you'll probably be coming through here, uh, and we hunt in Georgia. We've got where we hunt there quite a bit too, as well. They got there's some. It seems like good, that, good uh, hunting out there. Yeah, I, it seems like we, that East Texas stuff all from East Texas all the way to Georgia. Mm-hmm. But it's about the same type of country. It's it's yeah. our same brush. The 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 you know you got the big tall pines and the the undergrowth and all that stuff in it. And yep. a lot of it's wet and swampy, and it's uh it's um it starts to change uh, about where right where we're at, literally where we're located. It starts to get into some elevation. But it? other than that, it's all just it's all yeah. the same. Like you said, it's all the same. We're in the we're at the foothills of the Appalachian mountain chain, and. uh if you go a little bit further north, it gets to be some real tough, real tough country. Yeah, the woods open up a little more than not as thick, but like when you're yeah. talking about like going down closer to the coast, you just have a lot more brush instead of it's like, thick. Like yeah, you said even River if there bottoms. are some tall pines, I mean, you have a 110 foot tall pine. Uh, there's a lot of tree that can still grow up under that thing. <laughs> yeah, and especially yeah. when it's nothing but sweet gum and blackberries. And just like little bitty, just pissy like Chinese privet or yopon or something like that. It's just thick. Yeah, you need to. I uh, if you run finder holders and that kind of stuff, it's. I ain't gonna say it can't be done, but I mean you can do it. Um, uh, but you need a. You need really need a pay. That's a 
That's a hard dog to get right there. Uh, that's oh, yeah. why I went to like the bull terriers and stuff over the pits. I, I started off with pits, mm -hmm. but uh, this is something I wanted to say too. Like it, on these on these sight hound top dogs that I uh, that I breed for the the height and the speed and stuff, uh, they um, they don't have they have prey drive. The wolfhounds actually have some pretty decent hunt drive. I'm finding out. I mean, like. And a pretty daggum good nose. I'm like, wow. Mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, but if you can, but let's just say we just got a hundred percent prey drive that we're dealing with on the on the sight hound side, and then you're trying to add some bulldog into that to harden it up and to to get you a little more um, kind of change things up a little bit, just get you a lurcher, you know, mm -hmm. and um. um and to something that'll to work a little better, more uh, versatile. Um, if your 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 pits are more of a utilitarian type minded dog, yeah. um, they're very they're very versatile, but they're not a just a um, you know they're very usable, but not just a uh, just an all out hunting dog. I mean, it ain't, it ain't like you just let that sucker that's, down that's and right. he's, he's gone. That's right. You know. And there, so, there's people that'll say they have, and, and I'm sure there's anomalies here and there, but as yeah, a, but as a, as whole, a, as a breed, not. the breed standard, yeah. No. And, um, and you know, as far as what I have I've come across, you know, I haven't ever got one, uh, like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, when you, when you cross a, uh, a prey drive to a utilitarian, uh, minded dog, um, you, a lot of people want, they kind of expect, a hunting dog, but the, you don't get a, you don't have hunt drive in there anywhere. No, you just, you know, uh, you're either going to get a, um, you know, a dog that just that throws to the side hound or kind of throws to the pit or, or, um, or some, you know, a mixture in between, you know, is, is ideal. But, um, you know, you, you've got a dog that you can use, but you still got, you got to put so much more effort into that dog to get it on a, on, on the same pig, uh, a, yeah. a dog with a lot of hunt drive would just would find a lot easier on its own. Yes, sir. And then, uh, so when I when I come across these uh, the, the 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 type of the bull terrier that I did, the kind of an Ingalls type uh, bull terrier. Mm -hmm. um, when I come across them that that particular line, uh, I, uh, I that, that blew me away. And, um, well, just even, the, I, I started dabbling with, uh, the American bull terriers and, um, them little suckers are hunt pretty good. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, I've had some of them, you better have a, you know, you better have a, uh, a garment on or That's you right. ain't getting back. There you go. <laughs> you know? I'm like, my gosh. But, um, but you know, they're not all that way, but I've never had a pit that way. And I've crossed some, uh, uh, pet bull terriers or uh, the, the, the American bull terriers and stuff like Danes and stuff. And you, and I got pretty, pretty decent finder holder type dogs. But when I come across this, this, this high drive, high bred, just working bull terrier yeah. uh, type stuff that I've got now, um, but that's a game changer. Yes, sir. And, um, and then, so I, I did away with all that other common stuff that I had and I started putting this stuff in there and, uh, you know, if you if you're if you're breeding a little bit of hunt drive, a dog that's got hunt drive into a, a utilitarians or into a prey drive type dogs, then you have a better shot at getting uh, a, a finder holder dog. You know, something that will go out and work the brush a little better and stuff. Now, a twenty eight a twenty eight thirty two inch dog or something like that, I wouldn't. You know, we don't. If we're constantly hunting the brush, if that's where we're hunting the majority of the time, we don't need that. Mm -hmm. You're not controlling a pig in thick brush like that. So why even have the the height designed to control a pig where it can be in a in a time frame where it can be controlled? It's you know uh, you're, to me that's needless. That's pointless. Yeah, that's, and uh, right yeah, that's that's either. kind of yeah. And uh, Will's dog Jack I, actually the. I, I had, um, uh, I kept a dog by the name of Rowdy for quite a while. I had her for about, oh, two years. And, uh, so I, I developed her personally. And, uh, but that's Jack's, uh, littermate sister. She, she's there in Georgia now. Okay. Uh, she lives there. But that's, uh, I hunted her as a finder holder type dog. And, and also I would, 
uh, you know, pasture and stuff, whereas Jack was primarily hunted as a thermal dog and just let out to pigs and turned loose on pigs. And then when I got Jack, that was my big beef with him was it was so hard to use him in my style of hunting. But if you would, if I could sneak up on these pigs without them knowing I was there and then lead Jack to them, boy, buddy, you're talking about a Cadillac. I love that stuff. (laughs) But my pigs are so skinny, so spooky. I mean, it's kind of like, yeah, if you can't mooch the, my, I, I don't have a dog box. Uh, my dog's just riding the back of a pickup. Yes. And uh, I just two dogs at a time and they're loose. And uh, I want them hanging out over the side. And if I see, uh, you know, I'm, if I'm going by these fields and I got a pig out here pretty close, I just stop and mooch that dog off. Yeah. And yeah. if he don't jump already, you know, if he, if he, if he can smell them or if he can see them, they're gone. Or uh, all I got to do is just like that, and just give that little cue right there, and they jump off and they're gone. If they can't, if they if they can't smell or see, I just get out of the pickup and go to the one side of the road or the other, uh, and they'll shoot up, they'll shoot underneath that fence and go out, and then they'll they'll uh, they'll find that pig by their nose, you know. And usually the pigs are like as soon as. Uh, I see the pig, the pigs are gone. I mean, they're, they're hauling ass. Yes. And uh, so I've got to have a dog that is able to jump off the pickup, don't know where the pig is, jump off the pickup, go under the fence, find that sucker with his nose, locate it with his nose, uh, and then and then run that pig down uh, and catch him. And uh, that's, a, that's how I play the game. Okay. And uh, um, it's not, uh, it's not, Typically leading them, leading the dog out or anything like that. Yes. And, uh, or I'll, uh, I'll drop the dog and just on the, like hay grazer or mature wheat and stuff that I can't see in. I'll just, we'll just, uh, drive down the, drive down the road and, uh, they'll cut in and go, you know, I, but I do my homework. I'll go look and make sure pigs are coming into the field and stuff. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't, uh, um, it's not going in there blind and just slinging them out. Correct. And the better hunter you are, you yourself are, the better you can make your dogs look. Amen. There, that, you know, amen, I, with, without a doubt. I don't uh, like like old Tough. Tough was Tough was pretty pretty well known dog, but he got a lot more credit than what he really deserved. <laughs> he was a, he was a <laughs> Tough was a utilitarian, straight up. And uh, but me and that dog, we had hunted. Uh, I love that dog. I don't think I'll have, probably ever have a better dog in tough, but, but, uh, he wasn't, well, I say a, a better dog, a, a dog that I just, just click with so much, so good. Mm-hmm. I, I've, I've got, I've had better dogs and I've got, probably got better dogs, but, uh, but me and tough, we just, we work so well together. And, um, he would, uh, and of course he had caught, I bet he's caught well over a thousand pretty good pigs for me, big pigs. Mm-hmm. And, um, it just it's just so simple for him. Uh a pig if a pig run off, it did it did not matter. I just sent tough out there <laughs> and I just had to find a gate, you know, just somewhere yeah. to get to him. You know, and then uh, he might he could track about any, anything that on um, on these pigs that are in these uh fields and stuff, if they're running off to the to the um to the woods and stuff, I, it doesn't matter to me. I still throw the dog out there if uh if I can get to if I think I can get to him pretty easy. Um, if I'm hunting for a paycheck, if I'm hunting for dog food, that's a different deal. There you go. Um, if I'm hunting for a paycheck, I need to get minimal, minimal work for the most amount of pigs. But, um, I mean, when you say I'll, hunting for a paycheck, I mean, is it like, are you, you taking them to market or are you selling to yeah, high fences yeah, or I didn't know how uh, that I'll worked out there? Take them, uh, either or, uh, okay. but, uh, I'll take them to a, a, a buying station, uh, like they buy, uh, Live, I mean, trap hogs. Yes, sir. yes. That's sir. a that's a thing here in Texas. Yeah, and yeah. Um, but they, they don't buy dog caught pigs, but the, because they're they're tore up yes. and they're bit on them all over the body and stuff, or especially in the winter. I mean, the summertime, they're oh, they're, yeah. they're they're dying on them and stuff. I could but I'll sell my them. pigs to them to them year round just because I'm only catching one. I'm I'm, I'm I mean uh, I'm only catching them with one or two dogs. Yeah, they're and they're just demolished. catching. Yeah. Right. And, and also too, if you can catch them out in the open, then you can, you can get to that catch a lot quicker. Yes. 
and um, and so it's it's wound up kind of turning into a performance based uh, sole proprietorship for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I wound up making so much side money off of just just the pigs that I was selling. Uh, I uh, I had to turn it into a sole proprietorship. But well, that's, uh, that's a good problem to have. Yeah. Plus, uh, <laughs> I that's uh, I uh, I feed my I feed the pigs to the dogs. I don't hardly ever buy any dog food. Let, let's and, jump uh, into that uh, on the feeding the pigs to the dog. Let me see on our on our time. We've got about uh, we've got about ten minutes or so left on on this one here. We're gonna have to roll this into a part two. I can, I already know. But uh, <laughs> let, let's get into on the raw because I have so many people we've talked to. They're like, you you can't feed them pigs to the dogs. I was like. Yeah, you can. Yeah. So, so tell tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, I just feed them like a like a like you would a cow, like a cow each, you know. Yeah. Um, there, there ain't nothing I don't feed. Uh, the, if you're gonna feed raw, uh, and if you just meat all the time, uh, you 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 need a balanced diet, and um, you know you need to feed the guts. Mm-hmm. Um. To, to make that a balanced diet because that's the guts and stuff is where the, 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 the vet, the plant and vegetable matter and stuff is. Uh, you saying that the, the dog don't, the dog itself doesn't have, let's say the enzymes and stuff to, to which to break that down. Yes, sir. But the pig does and mm-hmm. he's eating the guts anyway. I mean, he's eating the enzymes and everything that are there to, that, that are breaking that stuff down. It's already in the process of breaking it down. Mm-hmm. Um, a dog, well, I say, I buy a dog from somebody else. And they'll eat the meat, but they don't want the guts. Uh, the dogs I raised from pups and stuff, they prefer the first thing. Well, that's and, like um, you said, that's what cows and stuff do. That's the first place that they get. Yeah, but that's a problem is that's where the, all, most of the parasites and stuff are, too, the yeah. internal parasites. How do you control stuff. that? Uh, I, I'll hit them with Dectamax about once a month and then, um, uh, some other stuff like, uh, um, Safeguard, uh, Cattle Wormer. Yeah. Or, um, uh, i what else I got. I've got, uh, Praise of Quintil for like tapeworms. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll do that once in a while. But, um, uh, and then my dogs will look. Oh, and I don't feed, but about I don't know if I can say this, but <laughs> every two or three days. There you go. And in the in, in the winter time, I'll just throw like a whole hog in there. I'll skin it, yeah. uh, and I'll and I'll half it up. I'll cut it in half, but uh, I'll throw a whole hog in there, and I won't have to feed for um, about a week. Yeah, you know, in each pen. And what I how I keep my dogs is, uh, and another reason why the raw works so well for me, and how I do this is. Uh, is my pins are about 70 feet wide by about 100 feet deep. Wow. I mow them with a riding lawnmower. You know, when wow. they pass the chain law here in Texas, I had to take my dogs off the chain. Mm-hmm. And so then I put them in a, and I'm, and I was used to having stags and, and, uh, or, 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 or lurchers, big lurchers, you know, and you can't keep them things in kennels because, you know, I, I did learn about the injuries and stuff uh, that are common with, uh, sight hound based dogs and you just, uh, and if you have full side hounds like a greyhound or a stag or something, you got to put so much maintenance into the keeping them uh, uh, fit, that, so you don't pull muscles and stuff. You know uh, um, that I was like, I'm putting these suckers in big pens. I'm putting multiple dogs in there so they can play, run and play and mm-hmm. and, uh, and and so forth and and uh, and then but so I can get away with feeding like that too. Like I'll throw a old hind quarter. In uh, maybe in the summertime, I'll throw a big old hind quarter in there uh, to maybe one dog if I just got one dog in a pen for some reason, and let's say he don't eat it all the first day, you know, he, he, and uh, unless it's one of these wolfhounds, he's not going to. <laughs> but um, but uh, you know, so he'll eat it the next day, yeah. or or maybe it sits in there for three or four days, and you it gets kind of for a week. You like you ain't got to feed again all week. Yeah, and, and and you'd be surprised, like when, if that stuff gets a little tainted, like some stuff out there that gets a little. That's yeah. like some kind of dessert for them. Yes. They they like that stuff for some reason. I mean, they don't just just they ain't gonna get their belly full off of it, but yeah. they love gnawing on that and chewing on it. There's something about that. that I, I, I mean, but <laughs> I still say, think everybody that's hunted, you know, if there's something that's being shot or killed out there, you're laying in the woods, and it has turned to mush. That damn dog is going to go roll in it. 
Yeah. I don't know yeah. what attracts them to Amen. it, but it does. You know, in the summertime, I don't like to have that kind of stuff. I yeah. don't. I don't feed near as much in the summertime as I do in the wintertime because mm-hmm. if it if it gets, you don't want that stinking stuff around your house and those, yes, and attracting flies and everything like that. But but the big pens allow me to feed the way I do so much better. And then I've got like a big old chest freezer. It's probably eight foot long. It's one of the great big ones. Yes, It'll sir. hold like twelve big hogs wow. uh, if I cut them up, and I'll I'll. Uh, I'll uh, I'll quarter them pigs up. I'll throw them quarters with a hide on them up there on the tailgate of the pickup, mm-hmm. and then I'll skin that torso out, and then I'll take an axe and I'll and I'll uh, I'll split the sternum, and then uh, break the rib cage with that axe, and yeah. on both sides, and then I'll just uh, take my own knife and and uh, peel that rib cage out of there, and then you're left with the guts attached to the backbone, and then they're so easy just to take out of there like that. And then I'll and I'll I'll, uh, I'll half that or, or cut that back in about three pieces, and then uh, the head I'll take that head with the uh, the skin on it, and I'll I'll uh, stick a knife up in the jowl, and I'll, I'll I'll well I'll just peel that that jaw that bottom jaw back, and then I'll cut it down to about the ears, and there's there's a lot of meat and stuff up in that neck, oh, yeah. and uh, so one dog gets the head, and yep. uh, um. And my gosh, I used to save them big old boar heads and stuff, and I put them up around my fence and stuff, the dog pens and stuff. And I looked out there, you know, I, I, it just got to where it's ridiculous. And and I <laughs> and I don't like people really knowing where my dogs are and everything. So oh, like yeah. all this was done, I just took a lawnmower and shredded all them suckers. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so you know me, I don't. You, you might you might find it hard to believe, but I don't have one boar mount in my house i don't well, have we, any boar heads in my nothing you know i just got the dogs i think say we it's we, not about the pig yeah we we start you know of course i think everybody starts out saving them and yeah. and then it got to where i had you know four or five real nice ones and then it got like there's some laying in here we're in the studio now and there's one or two there uh and we picked it up out of the yard it's got three and a half inch teeth on it but and we used it solely just to do a video to show how to measure the tusk mm-hmm. And like today I was walking around and there's, like you said, they're laying everywhere. And, yeah. and I was sitting there thinking, I was like, this, this is about ridiculous. Yeah. But there's a All point. It just, it, it's not about catching that, the teeth, you know, it's not about that. It's about the dogs. Yeah. That, that's what it comes to. I, I feel, you know, that that's what it has for, for us used to. I was like, man, yeah, I'm going to get me one mounted. I'm going to have a whole, whole hog mounted. I ain't got none of that shit. No, I don't need it. Uh, but going back to that raw stuff, uh, what I'll do with that, them uh, uh, them quarters and stuff that I put on the pickup and uh, and those backs and stuff is uh, I'll I'll then drive up to the to the carport and I'll put them in that that uh, that big chest freezer and I'll put uh, like chicken feed bags or or uh, corn or something. I'll, I'll lay uh, corn bags, empty bags. I'll just layer that meat in there and put another layer on top of it and stuff. Hmm. And, uh, and if I don't, um, it takes me about three or four, I feed about three or four pigs to my dogs every, every week. And, uh, um, but I don't have to go hunting, but once a week, you know, and then, uh, I just go out there to, uh, a couple of days later and in the summertime and just dig some frozen, uh, quarters out of my, out of my chest freezer, throw them on the pickup, drive around there. And I'll split them with an axe, mm-hmm. and then just throw a, uh, you know, a half of one of them quarters over to one dog. And I say, if I got three dogs in a pen, then I, then I put you know, uh, uh, three big chunks over in there, and um, kind of I like to watch my dogs uh, in the morning while I'm off work, sit there in my kitchen and watch the dogs run and play and wrestle and stuff and drink my coffee. Yeah, that's uh. You know, like I said, we do a lot of that stuff, and we we've had a lot of people inquire about it here lately. Uh, it's and and it's more kind of more like your style too. During the winter time, that's about what we feed. We feed a lot of a lot of wild game. Uh, yeah, you know, and uh, during the summer, know. not as much. You know, yeah, I did get hit one time with a uh, pseudo rabies. Oh boy! Oh no! Um, brought a. A pig over. I used to accept pigs from other people. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, in some of these buying stations, I've learned not to do that. Don't ever do that. Don't don't accept a dead pig from unless you unless somebody has shot it. You yes. know, uh, if it has just died, 
you know, being held captive in a trailer or at a buying station or something like that, don't yeah. ever feed it to one of your dogs. That's right. Um, because pseudo rabies will kill a pig once in a while. Uh, it'll just usually just kind of knock them sterile, but it'll kill some of them. But it is very fatal to your dogs. And I had, I divvied up this pig and I threw it to all the dogs and I lost every dog, but tough and a, and a, um, and a female. Oh, and, man. um, Nobody ever knew it. I just kept catching pigs with them two dogs and just, just never missed a lick. <laughs> never missed a lick. Just kept but rolling I, on. But, uh, yeah, but I said I had to kind of, I, I had to start all over, you know, and uh, yeah. that's kind of where I'm, uh, that was probably, uh, see, four years ago. Wow. Four or five, four or five years ago. And, uh, um, but uh, I've, I've started over a couple, I mean, I've started from about scratch twice. That that's but, always tough, right there, man. That yeah. is a hard thing to do. It's hard to but, keep the motivation um, sometimes. Yeah, I uh, long as, I understand how to make these dogs, yes, and sir. and I have access just because of who I am, mm-hmm. or, and and some of the contacts that I'm with, and you know, kind of the way the social media, like the Instagram, is and stuff. I can I've got kind of contacts all over the world. To some of the and the people will send you great dogs. I mean, they're like, hey, I yeah. got a kennel. I want to send you dogs and stuff. I mean, you can. It's uh, it's pretty easy for me to go out and find some good dogs. Now, I don't like everybody's dogs and stuff. I like particular type dogs. And I got a man in I got a man in Oklahoma that I've recently uh, discovered and uh, become friends with, and I think he's got some, in my opinion, some of the best best stags there are in the country as far as what you can use for pigs with pigs and and uh man i can go on his yard and get about anything i want you know yeah. or i can at least breed anything i want and, and uh that, um that's money but, in the bank <laughs> yeah but, but when you're when you're breeding you know it's not just about breeding this breed to this breed it is the individual within that breed that you want that that you're looking for mm-hmm. and then also too i want it to come from a uh, the, uh, a litter that's very good. Like if, he, if he's, if he's just a standout, uh, from a litter or, uh, you know, a, a one off, yeah. I, you don't, I don't want to breed to him because more and more, most, more than likely he's going to throw, um, the, uh, like the rest of his litter mates are. I mean, that's yeah. his genetics and really, and he just, there's just something that is awesome about that dog, but he's really only going to throw, and you can look at his litter mates and tell what he's going to throw. And, um, and so, uh, to me, you, 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 if you're kind of breeding best of best, that's, um, you can get into trouble like that. Also, too, in like, uh, let's say like my case, you, you, people like tough really, uh, a, a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, tough was, tough was an average, kind of a, you know, maybe just slightly above average dog, but he was in my hands and yeah. I worked with him a lot. And tough was people, uh, he was, uh, I don't want to, I don't, you know, I'm probably selling him a little bit short, but, but to, to give the example, um, tough was famous. Mm-hmm. People love that dog. When you thought, thought, thought about running catch dogs, you thought about tough. And, uh, and there's a lot of people that wanted to breed to him. And I'm like, he's just a, you know, he, he's not what you think he is, you know? Um, but, uh, I'm going to say like, the breeding best of best, you can get in trouble like that if you don't really understand what you're doing. Uh, and like, I want to breed from a dog that is, uh, that's line bred and he's also his litter mates and everything are well above average for the most of them. And say, if there's 10, if there's 10 pups in that litter, uh, and eight of them, are pretty daggum good dogs are, and they're well above average. And you got some in there that are really good dogs. I want to, I would like to breed from something out of that. I mean, if yeah. it's my type of dogs, I want to breed from something out of that litter. It's, it's the overall yeah. consistency of, of those genetics. Yeah. Instead, like yeah, you said, when, instead of one superstar, you would rather have a consistent pattern. Yeah. And if you're also breeding to a scatterbred dog, let's say, uh, um, it's like a F1 top dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some reason, you get hybrid vigor and stuff in there, and you can you can you can make some pretty good F1s oh, yeah. uh, that really work. But yet they don't throw good dogs. No, they you know, don't. And, like, and then um, it's, it's different if you're all. There's a difference in breeding crossbred dogs like I do 
and then I, I think breeding like a, a full blood, like a or, you know registered dogs, you know, within like say, uh, let's say you're breeding uh, Catahoulas or something, you know, you're breeding one Catahoula to another. That's a different game than what I play and breeding, you know, crossing dogs. Oh yeah, stuff. without a doubt. Well, Mister Dean, we're we're gonna be. Let's see, we're we're about out of time on this card here. Uh, we'll get with Nate. Or Nate, Nate, get back with you, and uh, let's let's do a part two on this, and just because I, I mean, you got so much information. Oh yes, yeah. I, I knew it was going to be hard to cover yeah. it all, and uh, Not all the topics. This is probably the least we... I've ever talked on one. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> I like, I mean, like I, I'm I'm dead ass serious. Uh, we want to continue this, uh, and so, like I said, Nate will get get with you.